Now it's time to bring in our next guest. That's going to be Matt Smith, lead oil analyst at America's at Kepler. Uh, welcome to the show, Matt. Thanks for having me. All right. So we're talking uh, crude oil here a little bit, a little bit weaker today, but we've had a, a pretty nice rebound over the last few sessions of nearly six, seven percent. What's your take here on crude? Is uh, is this about the geopolitical risks or is it about a demand concern? Uh, well, Tom, it's really about geopolitical risk in terms of the rebound that we've seen. Obviously, over the weekend, there were concerns because of Israel and Hezbollah were trading missiles or that, uh, firing at each other. But really, what rallied prices yesterday uh, was Libya with this uh, announcement that Libya was going to cut production. Libya is so important to the global market because they export the vast majority of their barrels. And so when, they, when you see a production outage or some kind of announcement like this, you see it showing up very quickly in those export volumes. And so because of that, we saw prices add on 3% yesterday. But in the grand scheme of things, Tom, on a Brent basis here, we've been trading within a $75 to $85 range. And now we're sort of smack bang in the middle of that range again. Yeah, when you look at this uh, geopolitical risk, Matt, we've been going through it since uh, Ukraine, Russia started. Now we've got the turmoil in the Middle East. You mentioned Libya uh, with the production cuts a little bit. It seems like the re initial reaction is the way that you would expect it to be. But it seems like the market just kind of pushes aside a lot of those geopolitical risks now, even at a quicker pace. Is that a concern for crude oil at this point? Well, I think why that happens, Tom, is because we don't see supply immediately impacted. So if it relates to Israel or to Lebanon, the the, the the basic underlying story is that they're not big oil producers. And so we're not seeing an immediate impact to oil. And so therefore, as you say, you see this immediate kind of pop in prices, but then you see prices ease back again. That's why it's slightly different here in terms of Libya. It would also be different as well if we saw some type of retaliation from Iran and then perhaps Israel retaliated and tried to target their production. But otherwise, it's a lot of scary headlines. Uh, and it's very, you know, it's terrible from a humanitarian perspective. Mm -hmm. But really, it's not impacting the oil flows itself. Yeah. And when we talk about demand uh, here, Matt, I think that's one of the, the biggest, uh, you know, outliers where is China rebounding or is it not rebounding? We've had uh, pretty mediocre data out of China for the last year. Is that also a concern as maybe the U.S. economy starting to show signs uh, of weakening? We're not as concerned about the U.S. economy. We think we're pretty strong here. But China has been a concern all of this year and continues to be so. Uh, in terms of what we see them importing from a crude perspective, uh, even last month we saw it really low. It was like a year and a half low in terms of those imports. And so they just don't have the domestic demand there to be spurring on their economy. We know that they're an export-led economy, but the, the domestic side of things is just weak. And until we see strength coming through from there, they're going to continue to struggle. And when you look at the uh, the gas side of this, uh, especially here in the U.S., we got uh, the Labor Day holiday coming up, uh, big travel season, expecting record uh, levels there. But our Bob's been uh, in a downtrend over the last several months here, Matt. What's your take here? Is this a demand issue? Uh, not necessarily. Demand is, is OK. So we've probably got uh, demand growth of maybe a couple of percent year on year. Uh, but really why we've seen prices of the pump drop is because oil prices dropped about $10 a barrel from the beginning of July through uh, through mid-August there. So we've really seen prices of the pump playing catch up. We have an additional thing there as well, Tom, in that you have the seasonality. So as you say, Labor Day is really the death knell for summer driving season. Then we uh, we start to roll onto the winter blend, and that is cheaper than the summer blend because it has less additives in it. And so, and it, you just naturally have a contract that is going to be cheaper for, for you know sort of October, November, December. And so, because of that, there is this expected drop in prices, uh, and just because of the ump from the drop in oil prices recently. All that said, the the pop that we've seen in the last couple of days may slow the uh, the easing we've seen at the uh, the prices in the pump there. Now, uh, according to your narrative about uh, the U.S. and demand issues here, you think the U.S. economy is doing well. Will these lower gas prices, especially you said after the uh, Labor Day holiday, if those continue to come down, that's probably a bonus for maybe U.S. Uh, the U.S. economy and equities. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, particularly for inflation, right? Because on a year on year basis, uh, the prices of the pump are down nearly 50 cents a gallon. So that is a big chunk, right? Uh, when we're, we're consuming 9 million barrels a day uh, in the US here from a gasoline perspective. And so, yes, that is going to be a boon for the consumer and that, that should help things. And so, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a good thing. Yeah, and when you look at the natural gas market, I think as we head into winter, that's probably going to be in the top of, you know, a lot of commodity uh, analysts and uh, commodity traders at this point. But you've got natural gas has been uh, falling pretty precipit precipitously. What if we get a cold winter? Because remember, last winter was relatively mild. We had the mm -hmm. Ukraine-Russia issues, and it didn't become a major problem. But what if that flip-flops and we get, a, a, you know, a cold winter across the globe? If that did happen, yes, you could see prices increase. But the situation we've got right now, Tom, is that you have producers that are taking supply off the market. They're cutting production because prices are so low. So if we did get some sort of rally as we started to get colder temperatures, you would expect those producers to bring back that supply to meet those higher prices. And so from a U.S. perspective, you know, we're looking really great uh, uh, in terms of production. Uh, we're not at a record. We're close to it. But uh, we, we can rise further there uh, on the LNG export side of things. We're, we're really strong. We're going to hit records into next year as we add capacity. But right now we're OK. So the U.S. in terms of low natural gas prices is in a great place and should continue to be so even if we do see strong winter demand. Yeah. And with that reliance uh, from a lot of the uh, European countries on Russia, if that continues uh, to uh, escalate at all, uh, that'll probably help U.S. producers there on the natural gas side also. All right. Great discussion. Matt, appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. All right. That's Matt. Matthew Smith, uh, he is a lead oil analyst at America's at Kepler joining us.